Recommending a laptop in 2017 is always a difficult thing to do. What Samsung has done here with the Notebook 9 is really interesting. Nothing. It's a basic ultrabook. So if you need a 4K display or touchscreen, well, this is probably not going to be for you. But if you need something that is excellent to type on and a really nice display, and you're just a productivity worker, well, this really is a great laptop. In fact, it may be my favorite 15 inch laptop to date, and I'll tell you why. In terms of specifications, Samsung has done a really nice job here. This is a premium Ultrabook, make no mistake. It is an Intel Core i7 dual core processor. Now it is Kaby Lake in seventh generation, so that's a very good thing. You also get 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. Being Samsung, it's no surprise they use their own PM961 SSD there. That's also known as a 960 Evo. It's an awesome SSD and I'm glad that they did include it here. In terms of GPU, that's where things get really interesting. They did use an NVIDIA 940MX with two gigabytes of video memory. Think of the 940MX as basically a booster. It's not a gaming PC. You can do some light gaming on this, but it's more just to help with browsing and launching applications. Let's talk a little bit about the display. Samsung actually uses a 15 inch, that is 15.0 inch display, which makes it a little bit unusual. I happen to like it a lot though. And this is a full HD LED display. It's also non-touch. They use HDR on this. That means it has high contrast abilities. Now this is totally optional. If you do not want to use it, you just flick the switch and it's off. It's also glossy, but this is Samsung. So their glossy displays are some of the best out there, especially if you ever use one of their TVs. That means it absorbs reflections very well. So this is actually kind of a cross between a glossy and matte display. It makes it one of my favorites. You're still going to get that really good color contrast, but you're not going to get the washed out things with matte displays as well. But your eyes will also be saved in long-term use. Last I checked, keyboards are super important with laptops, and luckily Samsung does a really good job here with theirs. This year, what you have are silver keys instead of black. Now that's good and bad. I think it looks better, but the black keys obviously give better contrast. The benefit here though, of course, they do have backlighting this year, which is pretty awesome. They left that off last year and it was really annoying for such a premium laptop. Now the backlight is a little weird. It's basically green and yellow. It's not quite white, but that helps with the contrast. Luckily though, the key travel and key usage here for typing is phenomenal. It's one of my favorite keyboards. It's a very soft keyboard. So when you're typing on it, it's not gonna be very loud. You do of course have the home row keys over here on the side, which is becoming the new style. You also have a full fingerprint scanner right below it. And I like how they basically lined all that up. So it just matches. This is actually one of the best fingerprint scanners I've actually used. It works every single time. I've never had an issue with it. Of course, the one odd thing here is all these keys have now shifted down a little bit. So what happens is the trackpad is slightly off center compared to say the space bar. Uh, you might not have noticed that until I pointed it out. It's one of those things you can't unsee it now. Speaking of that trackpad, look at the size of this thing. It is absolutely huge. It's so good. It's a glass trackpad and it is precision. So Samsung's actually been very good about embracing precision. I think it's one of the best trackpads I've used, specifically when you click it. It's a very soft click. It doesn't take a lot of energy. Now, I have done what they call buried the lead with this laptop. Why I say that? This thing weighs 2.7 pounds, also known as 1.24 kilograms for the rest of the world. That makes it ridiculously light. It's one of the lightest 15 inch laptops. Now I know the LG Gram is technically lighter, but the LG Gram doesn't feature as much hardware as this does, including that GPU, as well as a precision touchpad and faster SSD. So I actually think this is a better value and it just has excellent build quality. Now, it is metal, but it's like a metal hybrid plastic, so it's a little strange. It's, it doesn't feel as solid as, say, the HP Spectre, which, because it weighs two pounds more. There's no flex on the bottom. It's a very sturdy bottom, and I had no issues there. On the top, though, with the display, there is a little bit of flex in the center here, but it's not bad at all. For audio, not a huge fan here. Samsung put the speakers on the bottom, so you have these two little ones. But having said that, even though I would prefer them on top, they're very good speakers. They're a lot better than I thought they would be. They're not super loud, but the audio quality is really nice. And Samsung's audio software does a really good job of tuning it to the media you're watching. Now, one of the great things here Samsung did was this. You can open this one-handed. Look at that. It is beautiful. It works every time. 
Uh, it's a very smooth operation. They just did a really great job here with that hinge. What's kind of strange though, is you can do this. It goes completely flat. Now it's on a 360 hinge, so you can't rotate it all the way around. They have this basically for conference calls and when you're in a meeting and you want to share something with somebody. It's a little bit weird, but I see HP pushing this design as well. So, hey, it's not a bad thing, but overall, there's no wobble to it. It's a very sturdy hinge, but I just love how smooth it is. It's just really great to open and close. Normally I skip over software when it comes to laptops, but at this time, Samsung puts a lot of nice stuff here. There is what they call this iSync family. So I won't go through all these. Basically, if you own a Galaxy smartphone, you can do a lot, including sharing your camera, you can share photos, you can message things, share your screen, all sorts of cool little tricks you can do here. So pretty nice. Now, if you don't have a Galaxy phone, don't worry. There is this awesome app here called Samsung Settings. It allows you to do things like auto booting. So when you open the display, whether it comes on or off, you can control that. You can also control whether or not the USB ports come on for charging when the display is closed, battery life extender. I really like this one, outdoor mode, you toggle that. It goes up to over 400 nits for when you're outside, very nice. You can toggle the video HDR for the display. You can even control things like block recording for the smart camera and microphones. My favorite though is privacy protection. Look at this, security camera. This is a really neat feature. When you lock the device and you go to log in, if someone was to mess with your computer and say, type that in and watch, of course I got that password wrong. You'll see this thing here, it says security cam is running. What just happened now is what I tried to log in, it actually snapped my photo. I think that's an awesome feature. Kudos to Samsung for making that happen. In terms of performance, Samsung did a really nice job here. It's one of the best 15 inch laptops out there. It even beats the HP Spectre out slightly when you talk about raw processor. Now, of course, the XPS 15 is gonna be much more strong with its quad core processor. When it comes down to battery, they did an awesome job. This has got a 66 watt hour battery, which is pretty impressive for a device that weighs 2.7 pounds. That battery is easily gonna get you about 10 hours of real world usage. Now, I, I say that because it's hard to kill. I go sometimes two or three days with this device without having to recharge it. In terms of noise, it's exceptionally quiet. This does have two fans on the inside, which is pretty impressive in and of itself, but they almost never come on. Now, when you're running the GPU, say playing a video game, they will, but it sounds like a whisper, so a very quiet laptop. In terms of temperatures, it's never got over 102 degrees Fahrenheit or 39 degrees Celsius, so overall, it's very cool. All right, let's bring it all home. So this laptop is a dual core Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM. It goes for a price of $1399, which is actually pretty good. Now, the HP Spectre X360 for $100 more gives you a 4K display and pen support. That's not insignificant, but this device weighs under three pounds and gets ridiculous battery life, has a beautiful fingerprint scanner, keyboard and trackpad, and a really nice display. So it's gonna be a little bit different. It's not for everybody, but if you do a lot of riding and you just need a mobile device that you can watch movies on and just really enjoy using, this is a really good value. I should also mention there is a version with eight gigs of RAM and no GPU that goes for about $1199. So you can save some money there. I would go for this though. This is probably one of my favorite 15 inch laptops right now, at least for my job and what I need it for. Now in terms of availability, unfortunately Samsung is pretty weird here. This is only available in the United States and South Korea at this moment. Samsung doesn't have much presence in Europe right now for their laptops, so you'll probably need to import it. Now, if you wanna read my full review, including more detail and those benchmarks, head to Windows Central. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care everybody. If you want to read my full review, head to window. I don't want to do my eyebrow thing. And it keeps it very cool. It rarely gets over a hundred. Oh, f sorry, you got to pause that. I got to look up Celsius thing to do. If we, oh man.